الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد ولا علی وصحب وسلم اما بعد Continuing on in our study of Usul al-Thalatha, we reach the final portion of the treaties. And we'll be brief. We won't finish the treaties now, but we'll just go over and gain uh, some important benefits because we don't want to be too in a hurry. The third, <coughs> the third principle or fundamental is knowing your Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we said the, fir- the, the three fundamentals, first is knowing Allah and the way it's listed in the, in the treaties, he mentioned the third thing being knowing the Prophet Wasallam. So it is knowing your religion, the deen of Islam, and then knowing the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. And in the beginning, he mentioned, and of course, in the tartib of the questions in the grave, men rabbuk. Actually, men rabbuk ma dinuk, men nabiyak. You know, who is your Lord? What is your religion? And who is your prophet? So we'll be asked these questions in the grave. So he is Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib ibn Hashim wa Hashim. Min Quraysh and Hashim is from Quraysh, the tribe of Quraysh. Quraysh is from the Arabs, a tribe from the, the Arabs, and the Arabs are from the progeny of Ismail ibn Ibrahim al Khalil, Ismail alayhim afdal salatu wa salam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lived up to 63 years, of which 40 years were in the pre prophetic era, and 23 were the duration of his messengership or messengerhood. Meaning that the Prophet ﷺ was a messenger for 23 years. So not all of his life was he deemed a prophet or given the prophethood. Uh, Muhammad ﷺ became a prophet from the revelation. It began with the revelation, Iqra, Suratul al Iqra. And a messenger, he became a messenger with the surah Ya il Mudathir Qum Fandir. O oh, you wrapped up, arise and warn. So that means that he be, then was entrusted with the messenger, uh, with a message to deliver to mankind. That surah officiated or gave the Prophet Sallallahu the authority and exhorted him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to begin preaching that message openly. Whereas before, it was, he was entrusted with being a prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, but his message was only to a few. Although it, in general is for all mankind, of course, but it began with a few. That was just the nature of the Dawah, and it shows us the nature of the Quran and revelation and everything in rulings that they come in stages. Everything is in stages. And this was, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu homeland was Mecca, and Allah the Almighty sent him to get rid of polytheism and call to Tawheed, call to monotheism. Polytheism means many gods, many, a belief of many gods. And this is a pagan belief. When someone says, oh, there's three gods, or three gods rolled in one, or there's 200 gods, or there's a thousand gods, or there's 500 gods, and we worship each one for a different day. Or we have a statue of this one. We have a picture of this one. Or my, my sheikh, I cry when I see his picture. Or he's on my phone when I look at him because it causes my heart to melt. This is a type of worship. That means you're taking your sheikh or this person who you believe is a righteous person as a god. Because often it isn't just that they cry, but they believe in that. There's a ittiqad, there's a belief that they have with regards to this, these people they look at on their phones, their pictures. Some people, and they say la ilaha illallah, and they have pictures of their sheikhs on their walls, posters on their phones, and they cry. And they feel sad when they don't cry from looking at that picture. 
So that shows that they have the kind of love in their heart which should only be for Allah. This is very extreme love. That should only be for your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala on this level. The love of ibadah. That causes you to be humble and hu humili have humility like this and khudu. So the surah, <clears throat> this is demonstrated in the, the surah Yayul Mudathir, Qum Fandir, Warabaka Fakabir, Wathiabaka Fatahir, Wurudza Fahjir, Wala Tumnun, Wutastak, uh, Tastakthir, Wuli Rabbika Fasbir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, you wrapped up. Arise and deliver the warning. This is the warning of Tawheed, the call, the exhortion to Tawheed. And your Lord uh, and your God, do you glorify? You know, glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And your garments purify. Purify your, your garments. And all abomination shun. You know, all that which is haram and all that which is, is sinful. <clears throat> Nor expect in giving any increase for yourself, but for your Lord, Lord's cause, be patient. Be patient on the cause in calling to Allah, in calling to Tawheed. It's a patient path. The Prophet ﷺ went through a lot of torment. He was rejected by his people. In Taif, they threw rocks at him and, and you know, caused blood to call, fall, fall from the mouth of the Prophet ﷺ. People tried to kill him والسلام, So it shows us uh, that it's a message which requires patience. And this goes back to the beginning of the treaties when the Imam said, "I'lam rahimakallah anna hu yajibu alayna ta'allam arba masail al-ula al-ilm." That it's an obligation upon us to know four things. Al-ula al-ilm. The first thing is knowledge. Wa huwa ma'rufat Allah, and it's knowing Allah. Wa ma'rufat al-Nabi, and it's knowing the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa ma'rufat al-Din al-Islam bi adilla, and knowing the religion of Islam with the textual proofs. Athani al-amal bi, and the second thing is doing those, is is practicing Islam. Athalath al-Dawa tu ilay, and the third thing is calling to what you. No, the knowledge that you have and the knowledge that you're practicing. And the fourth thing is being patient upon that path. So this this comes back to that. That and it shows us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us to be patient. And that the path of da'wah requires patience because the NBA alayhi Mafta Salatullah were all rejected by their peoples. Some didn't even follow any prophets. Some prophets didn't have any followers. And they were rejected. Some were killed. And it shows us the persecution, and that's a steep path. The path to da'wah is a strong and a difficult path that requires patience. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Arise and deliver. And the Shaykh said, signifying the elimination of polytheism and calling to mon monotheism. So this was this ayat is is showing the importance of calling the Tawheed. Arise and deliver the warning. What's the warning? That there's a punishment if you don't worship Allah alone. And your God, do you glorify? Meaning glorify by Tawheed, by monotheism. And your garments purify, meaning purify your deeds from polytheism. So your garments purify refers to purifying yourself from shirk. And all abomination shun. Abomination meaning idol worship. And to shun idols by deserting and acquitting them and, and their followers. Removing yourself from shirk. The Prophet ﷺ called for all of this throughout the first 10 years. The first 10 years, he only called the Tawheed. There wasn't any rules for Islam. The Salat was being uh, beginning to be established. After those 10 years, he was elevated to the seventh sky where the five prayers were ordained. So after those 10 years, the Prophet ﷺ ascended to the heavens. And that's where he was given the command to make Salat the five daily uh, prayers. Then he prayed in Mecca for three years before being ordered by the Almighty to immigrate to Medina. So the Prophet Sallallahu he had his message of Tawheed. He called to that in Mecca for three years. And then he was ordered to make Hijrah, to leave to Medina. And then the Shaykh said, immigration is an obligation to the Muslim nation to leave the country of polytheism to the land of Islam. This obligation will remain to the hour of resurrection. This is demonstrated by Allah saying, Inna ladhina tuwaffahumul malaika 
ظالمين فسهم قالوا فيما كنتم قالوا كن مستعفين في الأرض قالوا ألم تكون أرض الله واسعة فتهاجروا فيها فأولئك مأواهم جهنم وساءت مصيرا إلا المستعفين من الرجال والنساء وولدان لا يستطيعون هيلة ولا يحددون سبيلا فأولئك عصى الله أن يفعوا يف 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 عنهم وكان الله عفوا غفورا uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran and this is the ayat which is illustrates for us the importance of hijrah, of leaving the land of disbelief to the land of belief, leaving the land of shirk to the land of tawheed, leaving the land of bid'ah to the land of sunnah, leaving to a better place where you can practice your Islam better. When the angels take the souls of those who die in sin against their souls, they say, in what plight were you? They reply, weak and oppressed we were in the earth. They say, was not the earth of Allah spacious enough for you to remove yourselves away from evil? Such men will find their abode in hell. What an evil refuge. Except those who are really weak and oppressed, men, women, and children who have no means nor uh, direction to direct their way. For these there is hope that Allah will forgive for Allah does blot out and forgive again and again this is also demonstrated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying ya ibad ya ibad alladhina amanu inna ardi wasi'atun fi iyaya fa'budun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says O oh my slaves who believe truly spacious is my earth therefore worship me alone Imam al-Baghawi, Imam al-Baghawi, rahimahullah ta'ala said regarding this in his tafsir, the reason behind the revelation of this verse was the Muslims of Mecca who did not immigrate, whom Allah the Almighty called by the name of believers. Allah called them believers still. Immigration is demonstrated by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, la tankati'u al-hijrat. In the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ said, Immigration, hijrah, will not cease until repentance ends. And repentance will not end until the sun rises from the west. Uh, and we'll end there and we'll continue on and finish the treaties in the next sitting. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.